mistletoe is part of it. Mistletoe holds the charge of the these things. And if you're if you if you want to make the quick extract, take your mistletoe, cut it at night, get a gold blade to cut it. Don't use okay. a metal blade. Okay. And make sure it doesn't fall on the ground. Very right. important. And uh, take it home and cut it up and put it into mason jars and then get 100 proof alcohol, mm. pour it in the jar and seal the jar up and put it in the dark and let okay. it sit for 18 months and every day take a couple drops and put it in a glass of water and you will get the positive charge. Wow! Wow, that's terrific. I yeah. have so much mistletoe here. I could I could pick it for weeks. The question is, how do I get up there? But uh, you know, I can figure out a way to do that. Oh well, you know, it's very interesting because if you read um, if you read, say, Mystery of the Cathedrals by Falconelli, or you go to the Notre Dame porch with the where all the alchemical symbols are, uh-huh. the very first symbol of alchemy is the ladder. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, how interesting! <laughs> oh my you God. gotta have the ladder. You gotta have the ladder, even if you're gathering the dew, because you gotta oh. put the stuff wherever you used to gather has to be up high. So oh, I mean, right. it's hilarious, and people think the ladder means oh, it's a ladder between earth and heaven, or right, it's the chakra. right, right. And it is all that, but actually, it's it's a ladder. It's a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I know. Oh my God. That yeah, is and really amazing. Well, and here's oh the God. other thing. The, the oak tree is super um, important in all of this because, well, my, my first experience with this was about 20, 25 years ago when I was walking, mm. hiking through a California forest, and I noticed that despite the fact that the oak tree was only about a quarter of the size of the ponderosa pines that surrounded it, mm. the oak tree that I was looking at got struck by lightning. Oh. And it completely exploded, this oak tree. Oh. And you could actually see what it looked like almost. You could put the pieces together. Oh. And I asked a forest ranger why the lightning didn't strike the ponderosa pines, which are t- four times higher uh-huh. than, than the oak tree. And he said, I don't know, but the lightning loves to hit oak trees. Oh. And actually, he said, it happens all the time out here. And I began <laughs> noticing that the, pine, that the lightning avoided the ponderosa pines and seemed to be attracted to the oak tree. Well, uh-huh. <clears throat> that's because the oak tree is one of the hardest pieces of wood. Oak is one of the hardest woods there is, and it's yeah. filled with a crystal. Uh-huh. The oak is literally a crystal, a network, a matrix of really tightly bound crystals. Wow. And, and it's holding this huge electromagnetic charge, the crystals are, and the lightning is naturally attracted to it. And so, therefore, if... Your mistletoe is growing in oak on an oak tree. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't don't pick a mistletoe that grows on an apple or any other kind of tree. Only the oak tree, and yeah. uh, you will have the second highest charged alchemical substance on earth outside of the dew. Well, I can do that. Yeah, yes, I you can. I can do that because, like I said, I've got, I was wondering how I was going to get these out of the oak tree because they're getting so big that they're going to pull the whole tree down. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would. I would. If I was president of the world, I, the first law I would pass is that it's illegal to cut any mistletoe. Wow! <laughs> Unless you're going to use it for medicinal purposes. The second thing is, is if you're sick or you know yeah. somebody who's sick, uh-huh. get them the mistletoe extract. Get it going okay. and get it to, especially people with cancers, people with uh, the clogged arteries. Um, it, it's a, a, a incredible one drug and uh, it's been completely suppressed it's only really known in occult circles like Rudolf Steiner there was an alchemist in France who actually I may still have his site up I haven't typed in alchemy mistletoe in a long time but he was a Frenchman who was in his 90s mm-hmm. and he was writing all of, he was an alchemical genius and he was writing all about mistletoe and everything and he actually got arrested and thrown in jail by the French CIA Wow. Yeah. Uh, and well, so, that you tells know, you something right there, doesn't it? It does. And yeah. in fact, yeah. that's why I, I was hoping someone else would come out with all of this. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> but, since you have, 
uh, is this written down anywhere? Are you going to document these this information somewhere for for general use? I mean, yeah, I have a film coming out after the Kubrick um, uh, called um, The Alchemy Code, in which I'm going to explain all the whole thing. There are oh, books good. out there that you can get. There's a really good book called Real Alchemy, okay. um, which is a, a really good book on practical alchemy, and there's a few others, but you know. The thing is, is that it's just not very many people know about it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and there's a lot of misunderstanding of the subject. Now, yeah, you have to understand the electric universe first right. before you can understand the rest of it. And when you tell people, you know, that there's no such thing as gravity, believe me, you get a lot of people walking away from you thinking you're absolutely out of your, you know, friggin' mind. Well, you know what makes that makes perfect sense because I've always thought that Einstein's theory about light not being able to travel faster than a certain speed was ridiculous. And that has to do with gravity. So uh, exactly because everything is instantaneously connected. They've proven this, quantum scientists, and and now I guess the next uh, group of of uh, I think they're they're uh, string theory scientists. I have proven that you jiggle one thing here and it's jiggling over there. It's precisely the same moment. So that's because it's all electromagnetically connected. Yeah, so, and, and 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 it's it makes when, when you see this, when you understand it, you really get worried about the human race because they are really, really studying the wrong thing and the wrong oh, yeah. way. Oh yeah, yeah. And you know, this goes into this, this this whole thing explains a lot of things. You know, I don't know if you know who Victor Schauberger was, but he was a great German scientist, and he was a naturalist, and he was spent. 20 years in the Black Forest, and he was, you know, looking at a waterfall one day, and it was about a 60-foot waterfall, and he saw a salmon leap the entire waterfall. Wow. And he thought, well, how can that be? I mean, this fish weighed 20 pounds, yeah, and yeah. it leaped 60 feet, and, 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 he, and, and, he, and he struggled with it. And then another time he was uh, uh, watching a stream that was rushing at about 40 miles an hour in the spring, and he saw a trout stationary in the water while it was rushing by. And he wow. thought, well, how can he, he stuck his stick in the water and it ripped the stick out of his hand. It was going so hard. Ooh. And he said, well, how can this fish, this trout, not be, you know, pushed back by this? Yeah. And he developed all these theories and, and, and things about vortices, and he was very, very close to being right. In fact, uh, Hitler uh, swiped a lot of his stuff and used it for the flying saucer technology. And um, the, uh, the, the point is, is that this explanation about the forces of, of the positive force of ground the Earth and the negative force is the grounding force, is totally explained by uh, it totally explains the salmon and the trout. Wow, wow, yeah. that does, doesn't it? Well, it no, does. I I don't want to throw a monkey wrench into the the gathering of the dew theory, but we know that there are uh, uh, things being sprayed in the air all over the United States. The chemtrails are every pretty much everyone is hurt. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people know about the the chemtrail uh, spraying program and that there's a, an abnormally high content of aluminum and barium on Mount Shasta and on the Earth, would that uh, destroy the positive um, charge of the dew and all of that? How would that affect it if you were collecting those, those particles that sooner or later have to come down and, and hit the Earth? Well, I mean, of course, it's a, it's a great uh, it's a great question, and uh, you should be concerned about what what they're doing. And um, and I've, I've I've seen a lot of the water samples from uh, snow samples from Mount Shasta. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And um, in fact, I live near Mount Shasta you know, by by the way, just because of the mistletoe. But anyway, um, uh, that being said, I, I, um, I assure you that whatever toxins are in the air. Yeah, are nothing compared to this stuff. Uh, nothing. Okay. <laughs> okay, I got gotcha. you. I mean, this is the most powerful stuff in the universe. 
okay. and it will counteract everything. It will counteract. Wow. And this is the other thing. As we go forward through the ages, through the yugas, uh, yeah. the earth get what, what they what we would you know euphemistically say gets heavier. Like yeah. Frodo's ring gets heavier as he approaches Mount Doom. Uh-huh. As we approach the doom yeah. at the end of time, yeah. we get heavier. The world gets oh. heavier. Yeah. And people say, well, how can you know how can gravity get heavier? You either have a specific gravity or you don't, right? Yeah. Well, in fact, it, it, gravity it doesn't exist at all. It's the electromagnetic um, binding. Uh huh. And it is what is is growing. The electromagnetic core. We're losing our electromagnetic field, right? Everybody knows it. The sun is losing its electromagnetic field, right? Everybody knows right. it. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that it's actually lost its field. It means that the outer shell of the field, the outside of the donut, uh-huh. is beginning to lessen, while the inside of the donut, the vortex that exists at the inside of the electromagnetic donut, is getting stronger. Mm. That's what happens at death. Okay, then, so are we talking about the, the death of the universe? In a sense, and about the, we're talking about um, we're talking about the the death of an age okay. and the rebirth of another age if we can pull it off. And the way this rebirth is going to happen is through the rediscovery of the Gnostic science of alchemy. Wow. And when it happens, and we will live three, four hundred years old. We'll go to college till we're a hundred and fifty. We won't wow. have children till we're. 240. Oh my God, that sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and our children will be, it'll take 50 years to raise a child. Wow. So that the kid will go out into the world and be completely wise to everything. Wow. There'll be no more fools, there'll be no more idiots. And, and this is the Sophianic um, Golden Age, and it's right on the cusp. They've suppressed our knowledge now for so long. The Archons have suppressed us for so long. And now, before they destroy the Internet, which they're about to do, yeah. we have to get this out. It has to get it out. It has to go far and wide. People need to tell their friends. Um, we have to get this knowledge out. And be, the other important thing is not just getting the knowledge out. The other important thing is to do it. Yeah, Set up yeah. a place in your house. Get glass of apple juice bottles or something. Yeah. Get a piece of tarp. Put it up on sticks in your yard. Put a rock in the center of the tarp with a little hole in it. Put the jar underneath the hole and collect the dew. All it right. isn't very hard and it isn't very expensive. Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, this is the this is the revolution. All the other stuff is bunk. This is actually the real revolution. And um, I don't know how long they're going to let me keep going on with with telling this. Well, so I think this the may more be the last time. It, the better. <laughs> uh, you know, the yes. more you tell it, the, the 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 louder you get, the better chance you have of of not getting uh, stopped. Well, the thing is right now is, is the reason that they may not go after anybody anymore is because the cops themselves, the secret police themselves, are so damn dumb that they don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> so they're going, yeah, this wacko, he's telling right, these people to collect do dude. That. Yeah, he's full of shit. Yeah, let it's him right. talk. Yeah. Good. Is he serious? <laughs> <laughs> Who does he think he is? What a bunch of crap. Well, exactly. So, so that's a big advantage for us. Now, uh, these archons, what are these interdimensional? Uh, this goes back now to Jehovah and Sophia and the mm-hmm. creation and all that, doesn't it? That's right, yeah. And Sophia is, the earth is alive. That's why we have this positive force. Right. It's in the body of the earth. Yeah. And the earth is, the earth is a sentient being named Sophia, which just means the goddess of wisdom or she who is wise. Mm-hmm. And um, Sophia came from the center of the galaxy, and she sought to prove to the other aeons, who are the beings that live in the center of the galaxy. Now, this is the mm-hmm. most ancient myth of all, the myth of Sophia from the Gnostics. Mm-hmm. She, she decided that she was going to prove to them that she could make matter into consciousness. She could take dirt and rocks 
and turn them in, in, into a conscious being. Oh, okay? okay, a single entity of of consciousness. Okay, okay, and so she created a place on the outer edges of the galaxy to do this experiment. Okay, and when she when she came down into the material world. She created kind of a splash. So as part of it, mistletoe holds the charge of the these things. And if you're if you if you want to make the quick extract, take your mistletoe, cut it at night, get a gold blade to cut it. Don't use a okay. metal blade. Okay. And make sure it doesn't fall on the ground. Very right. important. And uh, take it home and cut it up and put it into mason jars and then get 100 proof alcohol. Well, my, my first experience with this was about 20, 25 years ago when I was walking, hiking through a California forest, and I noticed that despite the fact that the oak tree was only about a quarter of the size of the ponderosa pines that surrounded it, the oak tree that I was looking at got struck by lightning. Oh. And it completely exploded, this oak tree. Oh. And you could actually see what it looked like almost. You could put the path, whatever you used to gather has to be up high. So, oh, I mean, right. it's hilarious. And people think the ladder means, oh, it's a ladder between earth and heaven. Or right, it's the chakra. right, right. And it is all that, but actually, it's, it's a ladder. It's a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I know. Oh, my God. That yeah, is and really amazing. Well, and here's oh the God. other thing. The, the oak tree is super. Um, important in all of this because mm. pour it in the jar and seal the jar up and put it in the dark and let okay. it sit for 18 months and every day take a couple drops and put it in a glass of water and you will get the positive charge. Wow. Wow, that's terrific. I yeah. have so much mistletoe here I could I could pick <laughs> it for weeks. The question is how do I get up there? But I, you know, I can figure out a way to do that. Oh, well, you know, it's very interesting because if you read um if you read, say, Mystery of the Cathedrals by Falconelli, or you go to the Notre Dame porch with the, where all the alchemical symbols are, uh -huh. the very first symbol of alchemy is the ladder. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. How interesting. <laughs> oh, my you got to have the ladder. you got to have the ladder even if you're gathering the dew because you've got to oh. put the 